We're back. This is theCUBE. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm here with Jeff Kelly. We're with wikibon.org. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's production of Splunk.conf 2013. Uh, we did uh, uh, Conf 2012 uh, and we're really delighted and pleased and, and privileged to be back here. Ant Lefebvre is here. He is a senior systems engineer at Middlesex Hospital in uh, the great state of Connecticut. Ant, welcome to theCUBE. It's uh, great to be here, thank you. Yeah, so um, what do you think of the, uh, the conference? We were talking about the party last night, a really good time, a um, lot of excitement. What's your take? Uh, it's been enjoyable so far, uh, learning a lot from the fellow Splunk users. Uh, Splunk really knows how to party, uh, put on a good time, and uh, keep their user base engaged. <laughs> so we work hard, play hard is kind of the mantra, words to live by, I say. But um, So you say you're learning a lot. What, what, Give us an example, you're a practitioner, you come to these events, I mean obviously mm -hmm. it, it's, it's great, it's fun and all that, but you really come to, to learn from your peers, right? Uh, I mean that's the number one thing you always hear, I presume it's the case with you as well. Yeah, absolutely, I mean uh, a for example is today I went to a talk where one of the folks was uh, running Splunk in a total virtual environment. Uh, at our hospital right now we are running in a virtual environment and to pick up some pointers from somebody else who's been through it maybe a little longer than we have or has a different insight, uh, it's been invaluable just to get that knowledge from someone else who's already done it. So it's maybe a project that you're working on or thinking about working on, or one that you've begun to implement and you're trying to figure out, okay, what are the, what are the landmines, what should I not do? <laughs> it, it gives me more ideas, more things to, uh, to work with. When I go back to the office, I already got a whole ton of stuff that I want to do, whether that be set up more servers, maybe configure my app a little bit differently. Uh, really, with Splunk, all the stuff that I've been doing with it now, uh, it, it's got so much value and there's, the sky's the limit with it. Well now, it's not, I'm not just going on my ideas, what I think Splunk can do. I have a whole bunch of people showing me other things that I didn't even think of that I can do with Splunk. I hear that, I'm hearing that a lot at this event, is um, there's so much more I, sh I could be and should be, be doing with, uh, with the product. But, but, and I want to get into some of that. Before we do, let's talk about your business. Let's talk about the hospital, sort of your role. Tell us a little bit about um, the, uh, the organization. So uh, Middlesex Hospital, we are located in uh, Middlesex County in Connecticut. We have a hospital with three emergency departments spread across the county. We also have around 25 network sites, uh, 10 of them being primary care offices. So we do a lot of business throughout the county. Uh, what we've used Splunk for in, uh, in our hospital's uh, deployment is both for network operational intelligence and also being able to audit a lot of the stuff that our users are doing and what patient records are seeing. So, so talk about your environment a little bit. This, can you paint a picture of what it looks like and you know, the major apps that are driving your business? So we have a uh, couple of data centers. Uh, we have two located in the hospital for redundancy and we have one located off-site for disaster recovery. Uh, the applications that we're running are a uh, plethora. We have our EMR, EHR for our inpatients. We have another one for our outpatients. Uh, we have our financial system, our employee system. Uh, we are a Windows environment, so we're running a ton of Windows apps, databases. We have anything that an enterprise environment would have, we have at the hospital, and it's just out of necessity, it's, it's today's environment. And, and how about cloud? I presume the vast majority is on premise. How, how are you using the cloud, if at all? Uh, we're a Google Apps customer, uh -huh. so we have our entire email slash uh, drive system out on the cloud. It's been a, a learning curve. Um, it, it makes things a lot easier as far as administration goes, and. Uh, not having to keep that stuff on site. So we've had a good experience with the cloud. When did you go to, uh, not to digress, but I got to ask you, because we're, we're, we're Google Enterprise shop too, but when did you go to, to Google Apps? We went to Google Apps approximately two and a half, three years ago. Um, I think we were one of Google's first uh, big healthcare clients. And um, with that, we had a couple speed bumps, but those have pretty much been resolved. And, uh, we've been going strong with them now for quite a while. Yeah, and at the time, you know, Microsoft really didn't have its cloud act together. Right? You, you, right, previously, you were an Exchange customer, or is that? Is that yeah, yeah, we were uh, we were an Exchange customer. We had an on-premise Exchange box. 
uh, sometimes it went down a little more often than we, we'd like, and uh, by outsourcing that to the cloud, we no longer had to worry about that. We can have access to our email systems, both on-site, off-site. Don't need to worry about our ISP. We don't need to worry about power. We don't need to worry about anything. Yeah, you didn't, want, you, you, you didn't want to be in the email business, right? So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it worked out for you. Okay, let's, let's go back to, uh, to, to what's happening at the show here. Splunk 6. Um, you saw that uh, yesterday, I presume you were in the audience, you saw the keynote, is that right? Or uh, just... Yes, I did see the keynote. Okay. Uh, I actually was watching the keynote from my couch because they were streaming it, so yeah, it right. was great. Cool, that is great, isn't it? <laughs> so what do you think of Splunk 6, what's your take? Uh, Splunk 6 looks amazing, I wish I had it when I was developing my app. Um, there's a lot of functionality I'm looking forward to using when I get back to the, uh, to the office, uh, so I will be installing that as soon as I get back. So what's, what's of mo the most appeal to you? Is it the, is it the pivot ca table capability, the, the modeling, the performance? What, what, what is appealing? Uh, there really wasn't one thing that stood out. I mean, everything looked useful. Haven't gotten to play with it yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to playing with all of it. And so, so you haven't downloaded it yet? I have not for fear mm -hmm. of, uh, I have a presentation today and you I'm running focus. Splunk 5 uh, for that presentation. <laughs> I'm actually going to be doing a demo, so okay. I'm not going to install any new software until that demo is over. Smart, smart man. This is an IT guy now. <laughs> this is a practitioner who knows his stuff, so you know, everybody who's enticed to download iOS 7, be careful. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get into some of the, let's come back to the hospital. Jeff Kelly, um, you and I have talked, we were at the MIT Data Quality Symposium, we had a lot of healthcare folks mm -hmm. on, the whole, you know, electronic medical records. You know, Jeff, what's your take on all this, and you know, maybe lead us into that segment. Well, you know, I think the the promise of electronic medical records is is huge. The idea of digitizing you know, the records so that they can be available, patient records can be available to, you know, across providers, whether you're, you're uh, your primary care physician, a specialist, uh, maybe you come to the emergency room, have up-to-date information uh, across all, all different providers. Of course, there are challenges with that. Different networks, uh, different providers of different networks, different uh, standards. Uh, they can't all talk to each other yet. So that's still a work in progress, but there's huge promise there. Um, another thing, of course, is taking a lot of that data, at least the, uh, you know, the, the, the non uh, real privacy or sensitive data uh, that you can, maybe aggregating it and doing some analytics to drive, uh, to understand high level trends around um, you know, medical conditions, things that are happening in your area, maybe you know, on the region or even uh, nationwide. Um, but then of course, you know, the other component is the meaningful use requirements. Um, you know, the, the, the federal government is incentivizing uh, hospitals to adopt the technology, uh, you know, to, to, to take advantage of these benefits I just talked about, but part of that is you've got to use it, the hospitals need to start using them, and then they've got to prove that they're using them. Um, and so that can be a challenge that I think, uh, you know, maybe doesn't get a ton of coverage. Um, so I would love, Anne, to talk a little bit about that. Is that, is that one of the uh, use cases for Splunk, your organization, really to help uh, basically document what you're doing with EMR. It's kind of, maybe start with what you guys are doing in terms of EMR adoption and then talk us through kind of how Splunk helps you uh, uh, kind of audit the, your use of the, of the technology. Right, so we're, uh, we're gearing up for our uh, second attestation for meaningful use. Uh, there's three stages, there's meaningful use one, two, and three. Uh, next year we'll be attesting for meaningful use two. And there's a checklist that the government goes by where you need to be using certified electronic health record products. Uh, one of those check boxes is uh, that you need to be able to create audit reports for your uh, EHR system as far as who's accessed what patient mm -hmm. records. Uh, so we were faced with a challenge. We need to purchase a product that fulfilled this requirement. Uh, it wasn't built into our EHR. So I was offered the challenge to look at a couple of different products, find out which one fit our organization best. Um, we actually, when I was looking at the two products, went, I think we have something already that will fulfill this requirement. And uh, that's when we decided to port that data into Splunk and search it, audit our records, and turns out we could. So you were already a Splunk customer using it for uh, basically log management, log analysis, or, or talk us through that a little bit. So we had a proof of concept this uh, spring for our Windows environment. We brought Splunk in, we were given a trial license, mm -hmm. and we were auditing our Windows systems because we wanted to troubleshoot things quicker, correlate things, and we were actually in our proof of concept phase when this challenge came along. Mm -hmm. And that was what sold us completely on Splunk, was the fact that 
not only were we auditing our Windows environment and our server environment, now all of a sudden we're able to fulfill a requirement and we were going to buy Splunk anyway. <laughs> so, that, so that made it, uh, that, I guess that sealed the deal. Yes, uh, absolutely. It uh, sounds like. So, uh, so interesting, something you mentioned a minute, moment ago. So, so the EHR uh, system that you've invested in doesn't have the capability to tell you who's accessing what uh, and when. Is that, did, I did I understand that correctly? Because that's kind of amazing to me that uh, some of that functionality <laughs> isn't included when you consider the privacy implications. It's, uh, it's not that the EHR couldn't do it. So they log their data. They throw all their data into a log file. Mm -hmm. Then they rely on a third party to order that data, to audit that data. So they'll give you the raw information. And uh, they do a really good job of it. Uh, all the fields are in XML. It's, it, it's really easy data to work with. Mm -hmm. So we do have a raw dump from our EHR with all the patient access information. Uh, but what we've done is we've taken that raw data and we've put it into Splunk and we now have a application that we can query by what patient's uh, records were accessed, who's been accessing what, uh, even for, for HIPAA violations. So if someone's accessed a record where that patient has the same last name, that's potentially a HIPAA violation because it could be a, a brother, a sister, an aunt and uncle that uh, you shouldn't be looking at their records uh, based on HIPAA. Mm -hmm. So, uh, kind of a non, well, maybe this is a partly a non technical question, but partly a technical question as well. So, how do you as an organization uh, you know, stay current with the regulations you've got to follow, with the, uh, the rules associated with who can access what data when? Uh, and then, how do you, when, you know, you've got to obviously follow that, and then you've got to turn the technology onto those rules. Um, how do you manage that process? Uh, we actually internally have a HIPAA committee. Uh, so, we meet. Uh, bi-weekly uh, to go over the, the latest and greatest uh, compliance challenges, the new regulations, what we're doing in-house and what we should be doing, uh, different lessons learned from other hospitals throughout the state that we meet with. Mm -hmm. So to, to keep current, it's, it's a, a challenge because the rules are changing all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. There's stricter requirements. Uh, there's different applications that are, are coming out. Uh, there's a whole slew of challenges and uh, we really just are trying to keep up, trying to make sure that we remain compliant. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the ways that we've been able to find out how to do that is by auditing our systems with Splunk. And are you using uh, the data that you've got in your system to do other types of analytics? Uh, is that something you're looking to do? Or does the privacy environment make it difficult to, to do that? Uh, n not so much. I mean, uh, the, the information that we're porting into Splunk uh, we're able to s segregate uh, just based on the architecture of how Splunk is laid out. So once we get all of our ducks in a row as far as uh, auditing patient records and, and being compliant there, uh, we have a bunch of other systems that I've already ported into Splunk in different in indexes. And uh, some of the data is just sitting there waiting for me to figure out what to do with it. Other mm -hmm. stuff uh, we're currently using to troubleshoot network problems. Uh, I see us moving forward into maybe monitoring biomedical devices mm -hmm. or car door access, things that um, other organizations are also using outside of healthcare, uh, kind of making Splunk a one-stop shop as far as knowing what's going on uh, to anything that's plugged into our network. Mm -hmm. And it's a couple other things that Splunk has been emphasizing at this event, uh, cloud and, and, and hunk, and I wanted to get your uh, reaction to both of those. So, so I take it you're not, gonna, you're not moving to Splunk in the cloud anytime soon. Uh, you mentioned Google Apps, but, but I just want to validate. So has the, has the announcement of the Splunk cloud changed you know, sort of your strategy there or your thinking there? It obviously hasn't changed your strategy because you go back and talk to people about it, but what's your reaction as a practitioner? I'd love to get that perspective. Well, we host everything locally with the exception of our, our Google Apps. So we wouldn't be using Google, or I'm sorry, we wouldn't be using uh, Splunk cloud so much. Um, and we also don't have a Hadoop uh, installation, so we wouldn't be using that either. Although I can appreciate the power that both of those tools are going to give to organizations that are using it. I mean, when we brought Splunk in-house, I thought we're going to need a full-time employee just to manage Splunk, uh, just because there's so much to it. Well, what I found out when I was using Splunk is, yes, I am working on Splunk pretty much full-time, but 
Splunk's made my job so much easier and quicker as far as troubleshooting goes that I've had time to explore all the other stuff that Splunk can do for us. And it's become a, a, a leaping point to get our organization plugged into all the features that Splunk can provide. So if Splunk can do that on the cloud and with Hadoop, uh, I think those organizations are in great shape. What advice would you give Splunk? Let's say you're sitting down with Godfrey and say, Ed, what would you, what would you advise me? What should I be focused on? What should I do that would uh, make things better for you? Uh, I, I'm not sure how to uh, reach out to, to, to folks uh, that, that haven't already turned on to Splunk. I mean, the way that I ran into Splunk was uh, I, I saw a Splunk t-shirt at another conf. So really, the thing that I enjoy about Splunk is it's a very nerdy product. It's something that you can dive into and, and enjoy. There's not a lot of products that you can say that about. A lot of stuff is, is hard to work with, um, or you're just learning it to, to fulfill that use case. With Splunk, the sky's the limit. I think that going to other comps and just having people play with the interface, um, I think that can bring more folks, more exposure to, uh, to Splunk, because once you get this tool in a nerd's hands, and we know they're all at the comps, um, you know, the, uh, they'll be turned on to it. Awesome, Ant Lefebvre, surrounded by geeks uh, that are <laughs> geeking out on Splunk, it's awesome. Uh, you're a tech athlete, appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Uh, thanks for your time. Great, thank you guys. All right, keep it right there everybody. Jeff Kelly and I will be back and with our next guest, we're live here. This is theCUBE, we're in Las Vegas at .conf.